Howdy guys, welcome to my kitchen. I'm the hungover chef. Today we're gonna to be making a uh, beef wellington, pretty old style traditional meal from uh, New, uh, New England. So we have all of our ingredients here. It's a multi-part dish. It seems really difficult, but once you get it down and you have it ready to go, it's pretty easy. So we're gonna start off with the meat. We're gonna sear this off. And then we're gonna make the duck cell, which is like a mushroom tapenade that goes in between the layers. And then we're gonna wrap it up with uh, a crepe that I'm gonna make, a savory crepe with prosciutto and the puff pastry. And we'll get started. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear the steak. We're gonna get a nice crust. We're gonna put this on our cast iron skillet. You wanna use a high heat oil, like canola oil. I would avoid using anything like vegetable oil or peanut oil because they have a higher smoke uh, temp and it'll take a while and your steak's gonna taste like olive oil. So we're gonna wait for this to heat up we we'll wait for it to start smoking and then we're going to sear the steak. So now that the cast iron steel is smoking, it's just about ready for the steak to sear. You want to make sure that you take the tenderloin. This is the middle cut of the tenderloin, right? The fattest, thickest part. It's also called the Chateaubriand, very French. You want to make sure you season this liberty. It's a liberally, it's a thick cut. You want to make sure that all the salt penetrates the thickness. I went ahead and I dry brined it just last night. Seasoned it salt and pepper and I left it in the fridge uncovered with my wire rack. So as you can see the coloration is a little darker, there's kind of like a waxy uh, texture to the meat. That means that the outside is completely dried and it's going to sear beautifully. I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to drop him right in the middle. Beautiful. Now we're not cooking this, we're just getting a sear. You want the inside to be just about raw. We want to get coloration because we're just going to go back in the oven at 425 degrees. You want to make sure you get all sides, even the ass of the steak. Nothing gets untouched. Keep that up, man. Beautiful. As you can see, I only had that down for about two and a half seconds. It's already picking up the caramelization on there because it's so dried out in the overnight steak in the fridge. Which is what you want. This is my favorite meal to make. It's like the most fun and interactive meal you can do. And it's pretty versatile. You can do anything you want with the ingredients. So we're going to keep it pretty traditional today. It just makes the, the whole house smell good. Put that over. I like to move it a lot. I don't like to keep it in one spot. I don't want it to pick up too much color. Because then it'll just burn in the oven later. There we go. Now that we have darkened the meat, we are going to hit it immediately with the Dijon mustard. You want that to soak it in. It's going to help cool the meat down because we need this to be just about room temperature when we're working with it later. So just slather it up. All sides, all sides. Right, we're gonna flip her over. Get to the back side. Get that nice yellow color. You need this Dijon because it works really good with all the other ingredients. All the other ingredients are gonna be kind of rich. And this uh, bit of hit of acid is gonna help cut through that so you're not just getting pure richness. That way you're not getting a stomach ache later. It's too much richness is gonna hurt you. So now we're gonna prepare the duck cell. The duck cell is pretty much like a, a mushroom pate. It's very fine, very flavorful, but it starts off, we're gonna dice up some shallots here. Shallots are nice, nice flavor. They're like super strong tasting onions, but with a little bit of sweetness at the end. Just gonna tuck this guy up. Should've peeled them first, but that's okay. We want to do like a fine chop because everything's going to go into the pan. It's all going to become incorporated with each other. So what I do when I'm chopping onions is I like to make little slits down the side here just to make it easier. This is called the bridge method. Squeeze down, go down the middle like so, hold it, and just chop away. Fine, even chop every time. 
make life easier, especially when you work in a kitchen like I do. You got to chop a whole case of onions, about 100 onions per case. Really speeds things along. You got, of course, a nice sharp knife. You want to make sure all of your knives are sharp. The dull your knife for the dangerous it is to accidentally cut yourself. And that's not good. Nice and good chop here. We got our shallots. Now we're going to need about four cloves of garlic, give or take. I'm going to do four, yeah. Smash them down real quick. Go to the side. Go to the side. Lose it on the floor, get a new one. <laughs> Makes it easier to open. Now what I do is because I can't be bothered to be chopping up all this garlic. A little garlic press. Just use that, it makes life easier. Got this at the Asian food market. It's the best. Plus, I don't know. Cutting things this small scares me sometimes. Especially when you're hungover as I am today. Duck cell preparation, the mushrooms. You can pick whatever you want. You can do all cremini mushrooms. It's really whatever mushrooms you like. I got my favorites. I got a little bit of the oyster mushrooms, a little bit of shiitake, and I have a little bit of portobello in here. You just want to make sure this rounds out to about a pound of mushrooms. That's what you're going to need for this. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this in our food processor. All right, if you have to do it in batches, do it in batches. I think I can get away with it with mine. Get them all in there. And then we're gonna just pulse it. You wanna get it down to a fine texture. You can even do this by hand if you wanted to. I don't feel like doing that today. So we're gonna just pulse it. Beautiful. Just a couple pulses. Make sure you stir up the top so everything's getting chopped. Okay, that'll do. We're gonna take this, we're gonna put this aside. We can actually put it right back in the bowl here. Nice texture, almost sand-like. You don't want it too, too fine. You still want kind of chunks in there, but it's all gonna come down. We're gonna cook all the moisture out of this. Beautiful. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up the pan. Remember earlier I told you to use canola oil for high heat for the steak? Well, this one we're gonna use olive oil. The taste of the olive oil is gonna work really, really nice with the, uh, with the mushrooms. And normally you don't do this, but for this we're going, to, we're going to, we're going to put everything in a cold pan. Because we don't want to get too much color on it, we just want it to just turn translucent. Too much color, you don't want like crispy uh, onions in there, it's not going to work out too well. I like this, oh, that's the other one. Put it on medium heat. While that's going, we're going to prep some thyme. Thyme is throughout all of this dish. Big sprig. What I like to do is I just grab it, pull it, chuck it. That's it. This one. Grab it, pull it, chuck it. I really like a lot of time. Put as much as you want. I would say probably two sprigs. That's it. Okay. Mushroom. The onions are starting to look nice and translucent. I think we're about ready to go for the mushrooms. We're gonna take our pate pretty much, throw that in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread this out. You want this to hold or suck out all of the water from the mushrooms. Mushrooms hold a lot of liquid. And we're gonna evaporate it all until it becomes a nice formidable paste. Once we get to this point, you can see the liquid is starting to come out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna help it along by spreading it out all over the pan here. We want it to come up almost like say like like clay almost you'll see it you'll know when you see it but you can see all around here all the liquid is coming out and it's evaporating which is exactly what we want so once we get to this point our duck salad is looking really nice uh, you want it traditional traditionally you would add like a cognac to it or a brandy uh, but I really like a nice bourbon you know, it's my favorite so I like to do just any nice bourbon, just a nice swig of it right there. With the cognac, you would have had the nice effect of it going poof. But we're just gonna be more laid down, laid back today. 
we're just gonna cook the alcohol off. Now it's getting that nice color that we're looking for. You can smell the bourbon too, which is nice. It just adds like a nice little uh, different depth of flavor with it. Okay. Now that our duck cell is ready, this is kind of the texture that we're looking for. We're going to put this on a baking sheet because we need this to cool completely. So when you put it on the baking sheet, you spread it out. It's going to chill a hell of a lot faster than it would if we didn't. If we just kept it in a pan or a bowl. Now we're going to make the crepe. The crepe is going to be the next uh, part of the dish. It's going to be the first stage. That's all I want to need that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get three and a half tablespoons of flour, all-purpose flour, with 150 milliliters of milk, whole milk. And we're going to need two egg yolks. Crack those open real quick. You can do the whole, you know, swap it between shells, but it takes too long. I just put it right in my hand and let it go through my fingers. Throw that in, that's one. Now these whites, don't throw them away, you can save them. They freeze really easily, you can make a meringue with it, you can make egg white on it, you know, it'll be wasteful. Throw that in. Now we're just gonna mix it all together. Make a nice crepe batter. You want to make sure you get all of it done. All of it whisk evenly. You don't want any lumps. You want it nice and airy. We're only going to need about ah, maybe two or three crepes, depending on how big we can make them. And if they actually go on the first crepe, which should never happen for me. So we'll see what happens. Get that nice incorporated. We're going to add a pinch of salt. And then we're going to also add some more of that thyme. Because these are savory crepes, they're not sweet. Again, I like thyme, so I just put a good amount of it. You can put as much as you want. Or just leave it out entirely, it's just optional. And we have our crepe butter. We're gonna make the crepes, you wanna get a little bit of butter. Cool little crepe special if you have one. I'm a nerd, so of course I do. Put that on medium. Let our butter melt. You probably don't really need one for a nonstick pan. But I like the taste of butter. We're gonna go for it. Now that our butter is all melted, the pan is nice and warm. We're gonna try to make two good size looking crepes. Spread it out, almost like a pancake. Let it go all the way around your pan, just to coat it up. Probably add a little more, it's a little small. There we go. There we go. Let her go. Remember the first crepe always looks like crap. It's when you start picking up the method and how to get it done then you'll realize how to do it. This one's already breaking, but that doesn't matter. No one's gonna see these crepes. They're going in the middle of a giant burrito. Even if they're a little bit broken, it's not a big deal. There we go. It's pretty nice. Love it. Totally meant to do that. Okay, we're just gonna unfold her. Going on to our next crepe. Butter browned a little too much, but that's fine. We might have to make some more crepe batter. Love that. I'll get that for There we go. First try. They got a little too much color on that crepe, but that's fine. Nice and crispy. Alrighty. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this all up, put all of our components together, and we're gonna get ready for the next step. We're gonna start with our crepes. We're gonna line these up. First, what we're going to do is we're going to lie down a bed of prosciutto. This 
gonna add a nice richness to the dish. It's gonna add some added salt. And it just, the flavors work really nice together. So one at a time. I'd say you're probably gonna need maybe six, six to eight slices. Make sure you get extra thin. I got these from these packs, they're quite nice. They'll come off the paper, that would be great. There we go. Just line them up. You want to make sure that this goes all the way through when you're rolling. That way every little bit is evenly coated with our pork. And if you want, you can even really change it up. You don't have to do prosciutto. You can do something like capricola. You could do salami even. As long as it's like a fatty cut of cured pork, it's good to go. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add our duck cell. spatial awareness as well when you're coating this on here. Make sure that it will connect to the front of the tenderloin all the way to the back so we have a nice even, even coat. And what this crepe and this prosciutto, what this all does, it just provides pr protection so all of this stuff does not leak through to the pastry. Because then you'll have a soggy bottom. Then that's no good. It's bad news bears. Use all of it. It seems like a lot, but trust me, you're gonna want all of it. Your flavors will not match up if it's not all there. Next, we're gonna grab our beef. Beautifully chilled. Nice coat of the Dijon mustard. Let me throw this over here. We're gonna roll this puppy up. So starting from the bottom, and we're gonna bring her up. Don't be afraid to use your hands, get messy. Looks like a big burrito. This is a hack from everyone's favorite angry chef, Gordon Ramsay. This is actually his signature dish. I'm sure everybody already knows. Wipe this down, wipe this down. We've got some cling, cling film. This is brand new, so I'm gonna open it up. We're going to lay down some pieces. You want to make sure you're going to have some room on the sides, I'm going to show you why. We're going to take this and we're going to roll her up in the cling film, like so. Make sure all this stays inside. Get two prosciutto. Roll her up, roll her up, roll her up. I'm going to grab it by the edges. And we're going to squeeze her. Oh god, one sec. We had breakage. That's okay, we're just gonna cover her right back up. There we go. We're going to roll it up nice and tight. It's gonna start coming together. I'm gonna put her face down like this. We're gonna put her in the fridge. She's gonna chill out for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so we've chilled our little baby here. She's all ready to go. We're going to unwrap her gently. There she is. Yeah, she's a little oily. Probably could have took some moment with that duck cell a little bit better. Oh, there it is. It's like a, like a Chipotle burrito. So we're gonna place her down, stretch out some of this puff pastry. Now this isn't homemade puff pastry, this is just store-bought. The difference between store-bought and homemade is just labor. It all tastes the same. There's really no point in hand making your own puff pastry. Unless, you know, you got the thyme and the, and the butter. So here we go. We're gonna roll her up. She's sticking. Come on. There we go. Get it nice and wet. Feel the edges here. Seal the base. And 
we are going to get some more plastic wrap. So again, we're gonna roll this back up into plastic, keeping the edges long, because this is gonna get nice and tight again. There we go. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Perfect. Now we're gonna put her back in the fridge to chill for another 20 minutes. So now we're gonna add a uh, egg wash to this. Actually, first I wanna get the lattice rolled. This is decorative, you don't have to do this, but I'm a nerd and I like pretty things. Awesome. Let's wash this down, give it a nice even coat. This is gonna help stick the lattice to the actual roast. Or the Wellington, excuse me. Nice, and it's gonna bring some color to the pastry as well after baking, once it gets hit with that high heat. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to rewash. Now we're going to sprinkle with flaky sea salt. Don't be afraid. Give it a nice salty crust. Make it look like a Philly pretzel. There we go. Now some people would say that they cut vents. Don't cut it out. They think that it lets the steam out. No, don't worry about that. You don't have to cut no vents. Leave it the way it is. It's beautiful. Nice. So now we're gonna put this back in the fridge just a moment while we wait for our oven to heat up. That way, this will all go in very well. You want to preheat it to 425. This recipe calls for about medium rare. So what I do is I put a temperature probe deep into the middle of the roast. I'm going to pull it out probably right around 129, let it rest, bring it up to 132 on its own. You can also do it any temperature you want, you know, judge by the color of the thing. If, if it gets too dark, pull it out, you know. Top rack. You just let her go. Let's say probably about 20 minutes. Give it. So we pull our thing out, our, our Wellington. Uh, nice 129 degrees when I pull it out. We're gonna let it rest for a good five, 10 minutes. It's gonna come up to temp because of the carryover uh, heat. And I'm happy with it. It looks nice, we have good coloration. Beautiful. Lattice came out okay. Not bad. We're gonna cut the edge off here. Good meat. Oh, fuck yeah. Look at that. That's perfect medium rare. I love that. I could not be happier with that. Perfect all the way around. Awesome. So traditionally, you would top this with a sauce. We just went analog in the sauce today. But you can serve this with your favorite veg, mashed potatoes. I like doing uh, crushed heirloom potatoes, where I would take the potatoes, put them on a steaming hot rack, smash them with my hand, a little butter, rosemary, sage, throw it in the oven, let it roast off. So there we go. We got our beef wellington. My style, hungover chef style. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a like, give us a subscribe and a comment. And hopefully we can keep making more of these videos. If you guys are interested, let us know. Suggest any type of uh, recipes you have. We'll come up with our own as well. Have a good day.